for our Chigos and Yigabida webinar. And my name is Samantha Kuhn, and I am one of the youth service specialists with the Muskogee Nation Youth Services um, Program. Um, we're gonna have everyone uh, this afternoon and for our presentation to be muted. So please make sure that that is uh, on for you guys. Um, I'm just gonna let you know that we have uh, several opportunities for you guys to ask questions. Um, you can use the chat box if you have any questions or if you have uh, any technical difficulties, you can let us know there. You can also continue just to put your questions in the Q&A box uh, in the chat or in the box section where it has uh, your little um, mute and everything down there. So um, we're gonna have some time at the end of our presentation today for you to ask questions or um, if you need a little bit more information, you're welcome to put that in either one of those um, areas. So um, thank you again for everyone that's joining us right now. And I just wanted to take a couple of, a few minutes to talk a little bit about our program at the Muskogee Nation Youth Services. Um, where we are, we, um, our program, we empower Muskogee youth by connecting them to culture community and resources. Uh, as you can see on the screen, we have a couple of our program goals that are on there. Uh, these program goals, um, they uh, range from fostering advocacy in which we try to help our youth um, get connected and stay engaged with like leadership opportunities, education, training, and other opportunities that are located within our communities, um, the tribe, uh, local, state, and even national uh, levels. Uh, we are there to help provide resources to our youth as well. Um, we provide um, different services that might be able to help with them uh, in helping them meet their goals. So whether that might be educational goals that they have, occupational goals, um, personal goals, physical, emotional, um, whatever it is, we just want to take um, the time to be a resource and reference and uh, help them. We also promote uh, civic duty, which we provide activities that help educate, train, and um, get our youth connected to different types of social um, issues that might be affecting them. We know that there are a lot of situations going on in the world today, and we just want to provide um, a healthy understanding of that. Um, and actually, that was for to encourage wellness to encourage civic duty. I'm sorry about that one. Um, we help provide um, voter registration and other educational uh, activities and opportunities for you so they can be engaged in our um, political um, organizations and groups, whether it is tribal or local, state, or our national um, levels of that. And our last uh, program goal is to create support. Uh, we want to focus on developing uh, formal and informal mentoring opportunities and working uh, collaboratively with youth and other youth serving agencies. Um, so such as one today. Um, I'm actually going to turn this time over to Gina. She's going to introduce herself and introduce today's speaker. So thank you for joining with us. Gina. Thank you, Sam. It's Jay. My name is Gina Powell and I am a college work intern. I have been working on the Chicago New Cabinet program since around June. Um, I just like to thank everybody for their interest in this program and I thank you for joining us today. Uh, I encourage you to continue to go ahead and just continue to be with our program, you know, sign up for our text line, reach out to us if you need any resources for you or baby. And also we can help you to achieve healthy goals. Um, today, our Chikosa Nikabida presentation focuses on providing resources, encouraging wellness, and creating support. Chikosa Nikabida means little steps, and this project is designed to provide you with the tools to help your children grow. The project is primarily for youth or young adults ages between 16 and 24. However, anybody is welcome to join our webinars, you're, join, you're welcome to register for our webinars, and you're encouraged to tell people about our program and they are encouraged to uh, uh, join webinars as well. 
So for the parents in our target range, we can offer assistance for planning with your future, connecting to resources, providing educational, additional education, providing um, education through webinars and workshops. And we will also provide parental supports like diapers or any other thing that uh, you may need for the baby. And I'll talk more about that at the end of the presentation about how you can become more involved with the Golden Gabita project. Right now, I'd just like to turn the presentation over to Lauren Randall. She is from the Muskogee Creek Nation Tribal TANF program, and she is the Youth Programs Coordinator. And here you go, Lauren. Hi, I'm Lauren Randall Meadow for the invitation to present today. Um, I am the Youth Programs Coordinator for the Tribal TANF program, um, which uh, we like to say is um, together advancing needy families. In the past, it's been temporary assistance to needy families. But um, I, uh, Samantha, I guess you can go to the next slide. <laughs> so here's our mission statement. I'm just gonna kind of paraphrase it for you. Um, the mission of the Muscogee Creek Nation Tribal TANF program is to strengthen uh, American Indian and Alaskan Native families' ability to um, attain and maintain self-sufficiency. So we do that by providing um, financial assistance, work experience opportunities, and career coaching. And then for our youth, we also provide support and services for them as well. Go to the next slide, please. We have three offices. We've got one in Oltmulgee, we've got one in Tulsa and Wetumpka. We've got all the phone numbers and fax numbers on there um, and our 1-800 number. And if you have access to the Muscogee Creek Nation website, we also have a eligibility form under um, uh, social service, or uh, TANF, sorry. But yeah, there's a link on there for that. Otherwise, you can call our offices at any of these numbers and you can complete an eligibility form um, with our intake specialist over the phone. So who is eligible for TANF? So we um, have to have at least one family member in the assistance unit who is a citizen of a federally recognized tribe and the assistance unit must also have at least one independent, one dependent that is age 18 or under and meets uh, the following criteria. So um, you have to prove your residency in the service area and then um, the caretaker relative must be a person that is either related to the child, you know, like a parent or a caretaker relative. Um, there are a few more eligibility requirements um, which our intake specialists can um, help you with that, but those are like the main two um, that are uh, determining your eligibility for TANF. So TANF also has a 60 month time limit and we count months from other states. So if you moved out of state or you've been on Oklahoma DHS TANF, any months that you've accumulated through any TANF program uh, will count to that 60 month limit. The only, um, cases that time limit does not apply to is child only cases. So we have two types of cases. We've got needy family cases. So that's um, family, you know, uh, mother or father with dependent children or our child only cases are caretaker relatives. So grandparents raising grandchildren or um, other relatives, you know, raising um, dependent children. So there is an application process, um, and then you'll do an intake with our intake specialist. Uh, once you're approved, a caseworker will contact you, and that will be your caseworker for the duration of your time that you're on TANF. You'll have an orientation process where you'll become more familiar with the forms that we use, our program in general, guidelines, and um, things like that, and then we usually do home visits also, but due to the pandemic, we're unable to do home visits right now. So we're limited to um, telephone calls only at this time. And um, 
So that's um, basically just a quick run through of our process for uh, TANF. So once you're approved, um, your caseworker will meet with you and you will develop a personal responsibility plan together, which we call the PRP or the plan. Um, and this is really the centerpiece of your TANF case. And in this plan, you will list goals for yourself. So if you want to go back to school and finish your degree or go to college, or you want to obtain a job or maybe complete, um, you know, like um, AA or a 12 step program like that, any kind of personal goals um, that are going to help you reach um, self sufficiency. That's what you're going to include in this plan. And then your caseworker will help you to build steps to help you reach those goals. Okay, so when you're on our program, you have to complete work activities. These only apply to needy family cases. And so one parent households where it's just one parent and dependent children, that parent must complete an average of 20 hours a week Two parent households must complete an average of 30 hours per week with each parent, each completing a minimum average of 10 hours per week. And those hours can be um, obtained by TANF skills development trainings. We've got different trainings that we offer um, as far as budgeting, parenting, we've got um, a training coordinator who has all kinds of classes that she teaches, um, which right now those aren't really happening due to the pandemic, but uh, um, we have other ways. Um, we have family strengthening activities. So those are activities that our caseworkers send out to our families and they're able to complete different activities with their children, um, such as playing games, just doing different kind of activities and they're tailored to each family's needs. So we have activities for babies, toddlers, you know, older age children, teenagers, you know, they tailor them to their specific case. Um, the hours can also be obtained by working um, or education and training. If you're going to school, those hours count towards your work activities or any kind of burial removal activities, which can be counseling, support groups, things like that. And um, another requirement of our program here is that any adult participant under the age of 60 who haven't um, gotten a high school diploma are required to enroll and attend a high school equivalency program. So by doing these work activities, our participants are eligible for incentives. So, um, different, uh, it's at the bottom of the slide there, but work participation. If our clients complete those 20 or 30 hours a week, whichever um, uh, their case requires, and we're able to verify those hours, that family case is eligible for $100 per week incentive. So our weeks run a little differently here at TANF. Um, in a month, we could have a four or five week time period. So in addition to the monthly cash assistance grant that our families receive, those needy family cases could also receive an additional four to $500 a month by completing their work activities. We also offer educational incentives. So if um, they go to school, a trade school or something like that, and they receive a certificate of proficiency, they get a $200 incentive and they can get anywhere from $300 to $600 um, as an incentive for getting their high school diploma or GED or college degrees. Um, the employment stability, we have a transition program and I'll speak a little bit uh, later about that. But um, if a client is on our program and they complete our transition program, they're eligible to receive a $1,500 completion incentive. We also offer two parent relationship sessions and those are $500 per couple when they complete those sessions with it, uh, our TANF staff. We also offer our families different supportive services. 
So if our um, parents on our program are going back to school or um, they need job skills training, we can help pay for those. Um, if they need to obtain a professional license for their field, so like a nursing license or things like that, we can pay for those. If they require special tools or equipment for their jobs, we can pay for those. Driver's licenses, automobile insurance, um, we can pay to maintain or repair their vehicle. If they need professional clothing for their job, we can pay for those. And then we can also pay fines to um, obtain somebody's driver's license to remove that barrier for obtaining employment. So we offer a lot of different supportive services on our program. And there are um, eligibility requirements. You know, there um, are budgets that uh, a client must complete and paperwork that they have to provide to show that they are in need and um, you know they don't have the money themselves to pay for those supportive services. We also have non-recurring short-term benefits and we can help assist in paying for housing expenses such as mortgage payments or rent or emergency shelter expenses, utilities and food. So um, like the previous supportive services, there's an application process and paperwork that must be completed for those as well. We also offer career development services. And so um, we have um, our caseworkers who assist with marketing our clients and making them self-sufficient. So we have career uh, and skill assessments resume building, mock interviewing, job placement. So our caseworkers, they assist our clients with all of that. Um, we've had clients um, come in and do like mock interviews with our caseworkers. And they will assist them with um, creating their resumes. So we, we offer a variety of services here to our clients. Our Subsidized Employment Program, or SEP, it is um, basically, it's a program where our uh, participants become an employee of a um, business or organization, and they receive their full pay from their, their employer, and our program reimburses that employer 100% of their wages for six months. So it's a six month program and um, um, they are able to complete that program. And um, it's, we've had uh, several clients um, use, utilize that program and um, you know, become full-time employees. They've stayed on even after that six month period. We also have a suspension and transitional service. So um, those cases, so a needy family, once um, a lot of people think that once you get a job and you're on TANF, you aren't able to stay on TANF. Um, we have this suspension case that people's, um, that clients' cases can transition to. They, um, are ineligible for the monthly cash assistance grant, but they are eligible for other services. So when their um, countable income exceeds their family's payment standards or for their family size, um, the case remains open for a period of six consecutive months. Um, once it has been open for that six months, the case will either close or if they're able to, they can move to a transition case. So a transition case, it's the same as suspension. They're not eligible for that monthly cash assistance grant, but they are eligible for other services. But once they complete that one year period on our program, going from suspension to transition, they're eligible to receive a transition program incentive of $1,500. And um, that's a one-time incentive. Um, once they get it, if they ever come back on TANF, they're not eligible to receive that incentive again. We also have diversion assistance, and it provides applicants um, 
who have accepted employment or are currently employed, um, assisting them with a barrier to maintain that employment. So um, they're not eligible for our regular cases, but they fall within the guidelines that um, we have and they need that assistance like to maybe um, purchase a set of tires for their car to get to work or um, a car repair or something like that. So um, there are eligibility guidelines for that, of course, and um, anyone can contact our uh, intake workers and they can give them more information regarding that assistance. This is my favorite part. This is what I do. So youth services, we offer a variety of services to the children on our program. Um, we require that the grades for school age children are turned in every nine weeks. And at the end of each semester, we are able to calculate those grades and offer incentives if they make good grades. So um, if a child makes has an A average, they're eligible for a $75 incentive. A B average, they're eligible for $50. If they have perfect attendance for that semester, they're eligible to receive 75. And then we also have started um, a new incentive. So we keep track of that child's grades from semester to semester. So from first to second semester, um, we keep track of their grades. And if they have made a significant improvement, like a letter grade in a core subject, they're eligible for a $25 incentive. If a child is on our program and they graduate from high school, they are eligible to receive a $200 high school completion incentive. During the summertime, um, I usually go and meet with all of our families and course, I haven't been able to do that this summer, but when I do, um, I take the kids 11, that are ages 11 to 18, a personal responsibility plan of their own. So similar to the parents, but more tailored to um, children and teenagers, but it's a plan um, that they complete of their short and long-term goals. And so when they complete that with me during the summer, they are eligible to receive $25. We also offer a healthy lifestyle allowance. There's no age limit on that for the children on our program. And that is used for activities that encourage their development. So um, if they wanna take uh, classes like karate or swimming or lessons, um, we can assist in paying for that if they play sports, whether it be at school or for a league, we can assist with paying registration fees. We can pay for equipment, uniforms, shoes, anything they may need to participate. Uh, we also have been able to assist um, clients with paying for band instruments um, for kids that need those for school um, for band. And it, there's really, um, there's really, no limit to what we can pay for with that, but of course um, there are restrictions so we can't just pay for anybody to go have like a fun day of going to the movies or anything like that, but uh, any kind of lessons or, or things like that we're able to assist with those and that assistance is a thousand dollars per child per fiscal year. We also offer grooming assistance, and that is for any child on our grants who are head start to 12th grade, and that can be used for haircuts or hygiene products, and each child is eligible for $100 per semester. School clothing allowance is another service that we offer. It's for students that are enrolled Head Start through 12th grade, and they um, are not eligible for their tribe school clothing program. So if a Creek citizen is a client, they have to utilize the tribe school clothing program. If for any reason they're denied, they're eligible to receive TANF school clothing assistance one time and um, that is $200 per child per school year. 
we are able to help purchase school supplies for the children on our grants who are Head Start through 12th grade. And we can pay up to $75 per child per school year. Once a child reaches the ages of 15 to 18 and they're getting ready to take the ACT or SAT, we're also eligible, we're also able, excuse me, to pay up to $250 per child for those fees. Tutoring assistance is available for students ages kin or kindergarten through 12th grade and we allow up to $600 per child per fiscal year. And then another service that we just um, added this year is our post-secondary fees. So the, our high school seniors that are completing those college applications and there's fees associated with that, we can pay um, up to $500 for those fees. And we've um, added a few things like with our healthy lifestyle allowance, um, we're allowing like our high school seniors to utilize that assistance to pay for class rings and letterman jackets, senior pictures, the, all of those senior items that they need that are really expensive. So those are um, all of the supportive services and incentives that we offer to our youth. Our TANF program, we also have a licensed counselor on staff to assist our participants and their children. So um, our counselor can help with anything like mental health, parenting skills, substance abuse treatments, anything like that. So um, that's available to our, our clients and um, our counselor, she you know, will go to the schools to do the sessions with the children or go to the homes. And I know she's kind of limited right now. And so I think most of her um, sessions now are limited to telephone calls like like everything or zoom meetings, I believe. And we have a training coordinator here that um, conducts weekly workshops. So she does topics such as job readiness, career development, personal development, financial literacy and parenting skills. And she was doing those classes every day till COVID. And then now we're not really able to have those, but we do have a coordinator and those workshops that we have, um, when our clients attend those, that time that they spend at those workshops, they are able to count those towards their work activities that we require of them. This fatherhood is sacred and motherhood is sacred. This is one of the um, trainings that our clients can um, do while on our program. I went through this training myself with um, our co coordinator who conducts that training. And um, it's, a, uh, it's a 12 week or a six week program, but um, they're able to participate in that training while on our program. And that's just a little bit more, that slide just tells a little bit more about that training. Um, it's all about healthy parenting and, and things like that. So that is the end of my presentation. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask away. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lauren, for that presentation. That was a good presentation. I, that's a lot of good incentives for the, uh, you know, for the participants. Mm -hmm. And um, I just have one question. Would a youth be able to apply for services, say, if the youth was uh, 16, 17 years old, would they be able to provide, I mean, would they be able to apply for services or would like their parents have to apply for them or how would that work? Yes, the 16 or 17 year old, yes, they would be able to apply. Okay, okay. Um, does anybody have any questions for Lauren? I think that was a great presentation and thank you, Lauren. That was very oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, anybody have any last questions? Yeah, um, like Sam, let's just give Lauren a hand. <laughs> um, so thank you, Lauren, for that presentation. Oh, we have one. And um, they asked, 
did not know TANF offered so much while on the program. And yes, very good presentation. Thank you. Yeah, we offer a lot of different services and I feel like we help a lot of people and, um, and I'm, I'm happy to be able to be a part of that. Thank you, Lauren. Mm -hmm. um, before this, uh, I did put in the chat Lauren's number. So if you want to uh, contact her, you can, uh, she's with the Muscogee Creek Nation Tribal Tanner and she's the Youth Court Programs Coordinator and her number is 918-732-7985. If you have any questions, just feel free to give her a call. Uh, um, I did have one question before we go. Is there a specific deadline um, for the applications for the youth or adults, families to apply for the program? No, um, we take applications year round. So um, we usually will, um, a lot of people will complete that eligibility form um, on the Creek Nation website or they will call the 732-7985 number and complete that eligibility form over the phone with one of our intake mm -hmm. specialists. And then um, after that, we'll determine eligibility and then do an intake, a further, um, you know, more in-depth visit with them. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, the application period, we're open all the time. Okay, awesome. I was like, that was one thing I was just kind of wondering, so. and. For Tana, I was like, I think I might have skipped over it or I might not have seen it, but is there any requirements for like them to live within the boundaries or can they be at large too as well? Yes, we, um, to be on TANF, we, they have to live in the boundaries um, around Creek Nation and mm -hmm. there, um, you know, there are areas where we're limited to um, like the citizens that we are able to assist. And I don't have that map in front of me right now, but um, anyone can call and speak to our intake specialists and they can uh, let you know, you know, if you're in the boundaries and are eligible to apply for our program. Awesome. Well, thank you, Lauren. And thank you. <laughs> well, um, well, I guess if there's no other questions, uh, like Gina said, you can um, check out Lauren's information in the chat box. You can also um, contact her office. Um, or if you have any other questions, you can contact Gina or our offices too. Um, and so we just thank everyone for being online with us today and for joining us. And thank you, Mado to Tana. That was very, very informational. And um, yeah, we just thank you guys for all being here. And so uh, we'll see you next week. Right, Gina? Um, Sam, uh, before, um, before the webinar ends, uh, before the webinar closes, you will see a link to begin a survey to give us some feedback on this webinar today. We value your input so that we can continue to improve the services for, uh, for everyone. And uh, if you are pregnant or in between the ages of 16 and 24 and are within the Creek Nation boundaries and would like to be more involved with Chicos and Yucavita, you can contact our office, like Sam said, and you can either speak to me or Nancy at 549-2557. And I also just want to remind everyone um, watching today that if you would like to receive parenting tips, uh, information, resources to text at Lil Steps to 81010 that's at Lil Steps to 81010 and uh, you can just be on the lookout for the next flyer for the upcoming webinars I think we don't have any plan for this month we may have a get together um, online for the month of September but um, our next webinars probably won't be until October so just be on the lookout for the flyers and thank you everyone again and thank you Lauren for your um, for your time with us today. We really do appreciate it. Oh, Mado. Mado, everyone. Thank you.